So I've been trying to develop a workflow for a multi-queue feature length film and I wanted to see what I could do using just logic. So what I thought I would do is just share some of the stuff that I've figured out so far and see if there's any feedback on what I'm doing. Now rather than using the actual video that I'm working on at the moment I've taken this uh, lovely video from Christian Henson. Uh, check out his channel that will be linked below. Now the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get time code burnt into this video so that we can see it on screen no matter where we are no matter what we're launching this in and that's just going to help us a lot in terms of lining everything up and seeing things visually. Hopefully you'll be able to get burnt in time code from your video editor. That's generally what you'd expect them to be delivering you as a composer but maybe they're new to it it. maybe it's an independent film and so you need to go and see if you can ask for it in this case I don't have burnt in time code in this video so I'm going to show you some examples in Adobe Premiere and also DaVinci Resolve on how you can go about doing that so I've loaded up DaVinci Resolve here. If you haven't checked out DaVinci Resolve, it uh, comes from Blackmagic. There's a free edition, so you can do everything you need for this particular activity within the free version. Uh, there is also a paid for version with much more advanced features. So what I'm gonna do, grab the video that we were just looking at and dump it straight onto the timeline. And now actually adding in the burnt in timecode is, is actually pretty quick. We go to workspace, we go to data burn in, we get this nice little menu. And in this case, I'm going to add the source timecode and you can see it's just overlaid that now over the video here. And now if we just start playing back the video, we'll see that we've got all of the time code just running over the video. Now all I need to do is just render this out. Uh, so that's just a very straightforward activity down to deliver and then choose the format I want to deliver it in. Now with Adobe Premiere, there's a couple of ways in which you can go about doing the same thing. So let's drag in the same video onto the timeline and that's gonna add it to the project. So we can see we've got the same video. All we need to do now is come up to effects and we've got video effects coming down here into video and we'll see there is a time code. So if I drag and drop that directly onto the video clip inside the timeline, you can see it adds an overlay and you can decide exactly how you want that set up. So in my case, I'm going to drag this opacity completely up to 100% and I'm not super keen on the field symbol. And then again, we've got that being added and we can go ahead and then render this down in the same way as we were before. If you are doing a more complex project where you actually have multiple clips in the timeline and you want to be able to have this same overlay effect, you're going to need to do a slightly different thing. So let's just back this back one step. If I want to then add the time code over this, if I were to do this on the individual clips, we'd get the time codes of those clips individually rather than the time code over the entire film. So what I need to do is actually come in here, do new item, create a transparent video and I'm going to add that transparent video to a track that is above the main video track so it needs to be effectively running on top of it so we've got this transparent movie that's now sat over it and then what we do is the same thing as before we would drop the time code but this time the time code is going to go onto the transparent track rather than onto the main clips but we can do exactly the same as we had before so we can set this up with with the 100% opacity, get rid of the little field symbol, and again, we see that overlaying. But of course, I'm gonna to have to now set the length of this video to be the entire length of my movie so that I have the overlay going the whole way. And so if I set this transparent video here, all I need to do is set the speed and duration, and I'm gonna set that to an hour and 15. And so then we're gonna have that transparency video going all the way to the very end. We have that overlay on everything and then we can render that down. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a master logic project that I'm gonna to use to hold the entire film and then assemble my cues into that film. Now I know a lot of composers will use Pro Tools for this same job. I don't have Pro Tools, so I'm gonna try and do everything inside of Logic. So all I need to do here is grab my video and just drop it into the timeline. I'm gonna drop it direct in at the beginning. And now we have the lovely video as we had all set up. So this is gonna act as my master, and then I'm going to create individual projects for each of the cues. 
So now I'm creating a second project and this project is going to be the one where I'm going to do my composing. In this case, going to be for a queue, which I'm calling 1M4. So same thing as before, but first off, what I need to do is set up the synchronization settings. So if we go to project settings, synchronization, what we're going to do is we're going to start at bar five. Uh, we also can see that over in the tempo map. So you can see the alignment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in the video and I'm going to put it in at bar five. And if we come up here, just go into the custom display, then we should be able to see all of our nice time codes are lining up between what we've burnt in and what we've got up here. But for this particular queue, I don't want to be actually starting at the very beginning. I'm going to be some way into the movie. This is actually the fourth queue of the movie. So let's go and find where that is. So this particular queue is actually going to start at 20 minutes into the film. So we're going to readjust those synchronization settings a second time. And we're going to line up bar five with 20 minutes in synchronization. And we're going to line up bar five this time with 20 minutes. And now we go to the beginning and bar five is now absolutely at 20 minutes in. So now let's do a very rough composition, just do a piano part. So I'm going to add in a track for that. And let's load up the soft piano on labs. And we're just going to play in any old thing. It doesn't really matter at this point what the piece is. So with that recorded in, I'm just going to very quickly bounce that in place. Now we've got an audio file to work with. Obviously, this would likely to be your mix down across all of your tracks, or you might be doing individual stems. Doesn't really matter. In this case, we've now got an audio file to work with. So let's export that region. And so what's important in terms of this export is we're going to be exporting in WAV format. And it turns out the way in which Logic exports things in WAV format is that they are going to be a broadcast WAV format, BWF or WAV with burnt in time code. So all the time code information that we've got in the original project is going to end up in this WAV file. So let's just export that now. And now we can switch back to the other master project. So now I'm back in the master project and what I'm going to do is bring that queue into the master. Let's zoom this out a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag that WAV file across and I'm just going to dump it anywhere in the timeline. It really doesn't matter where I dump it because the magic trick that I'm going to do now is I'm going to go move to recorded position. So right click, move, move to recorded position and you can see it's moved it in the timeline and hopefully we will find but it has moved it exactly to that 20 minute mark where we started the 1M4Q. And so now we can just carry on doing this. We can write a queue per project and then assemble them all back in Logic. So to see this from the perspective of the video editor, we're back in Adobe Premiere here and let's go and drag in the WAV file. And you can see here we've got the, all the time code information coming out. So that's lovely. So let's just drop that into the timeline, doesn't matter where. Now what I realized when I set up this burnt in time code is I've made a slight error. This should be starting at one hour. By convention with film, you start at one hour so that if you've got any slates or anything else that needs to go before the film, those can come at a time code before that. So I'm just gonna fix that at least in this project by going to start time and I'm gonna set that to one hour. So with that set up, I can now select the video, select the audio, and then go to synchronize. And we can see it's selected time code, hit OK. And now let's just zoom out. And we should find that just here. At exactly 20 minutes, we've got the audio and the video all synchronized again. So I hope this was a helpful video. It's still a process that I'm refining, so I'm going to keep working through it and see how it works for me. And if you've got any comments or any suggestions on how to improve the workflow or got alternatives that you'd like to share, put them in a comment below. Thanks very much.